Welcome to another episode of the New N51 Spotlight. The New N51 is a project that my friends Infinipede and Banana Meteor and I have been doing for over six years, going through and redesigning every Pokemon from Generation 1. We are about to finish the project, but I'll tell you more about that at the end. In this video series, we recap our designs to tell you a bit more about what the concept was and how we're feeling about them several months later. Today we're covering Staryu and Starmie, Mr. Mime, Jinx, Scyther, and Pinsir, none of which are my designs. Here's Infinity to get us started with their concepts for Staryu and Starmie. Staryu and Starmie are pretty basic. They're just starfish with different colors and different numbers of legs and the gems a different shape. That's whatever. I wanted to add some variety, so I looked into some starfish stuff and I found out that starfish larvae are actually like free swimming, bilaterally symmetrical polyp things. So I thought it would be fun to make Staryu one of those. The other thing that I took issue with, I guess you could say, was they don't really have any way of visually showing that they're psychic type. And I took a little bit of inspiration from the Beholder from Dungeons and Dragons, which is like a one-eyed, tentacled, floating head. And I gave our Staryu and Starmie one eye. And I did a couple other changes, just added some spikes and stuff, changed the color on Staryu. I actually didn't feel like these guys needed many changes. You made the symmetry better on Starmie. Yeah, so we have five of the gold bands or bezels, whatever you want to call them, and uh, five of the arms, front arms and back arms as well. I mean, I wouldn't say they're one of my favorite designs that I've done, but I they serve their purpose. They do what they need to do. On Tumblr, they are one of the like highest, if not the highest, like in terms of notes we've gotten, which is crazy to me because like Staryu and Starmie are not particularly like beloved Pokemon to my knowledge. They, I don't know. Maybe there's a huge fan club out there. Next up, Banana Meteor will tell you about her thoughts on Mr. Mime. When it comes to Mr. Mime's original design, I think it's tough when you have a design that humanoid and you don't give it clothes. It starts to feel weird. It starts to feel kind of like a naked man running around in the Pokemon universe. And as much as I don't love clothes on Pokemon, I feel like Mr. Mime kind of necessitates it. He's a little guy and he should have more to wear and less dodgeballs on his body. I know I had, uh, on my original sketch, I had like holes in the pants and you were like, no. You kind of wanted there to be less uh, clothing holes, which is, which is, that's fine. I'm, I'm neutral on that. Ultimately, the inspiration I took for the new design is, is, it's from Mimes, which of course is a no brainer, but like for being called Mr. Mime, Mr. Mime doesn't have that many traits like visually of a mime, like he moves around like a mime, but he doesn't really look like a mime. I don't know if his name is different in Japanese and, and the mime thing is just kind of like what we got, but uh, I really played up the mimery. The boy has a bow tie and the girl has an ascot, but it's just kind of something I wanted to play around with since the name Mr. Mime is so gendered. It felt like a Pokemon that should have sexual dimorphism just because of how gendered its name is. So there should be a Mrs. Mime too. Why not? Should be a non-binary mime. I didn't make that one but there should be i originally had more of like a bubblegum color on the mime skin and my my shoes were a little pinker i i think i like my original colors more but it's the kind of thing where, where you and everyone in chat was like no we should go more monotone with it and like if if that's the play then that's the play i'm not gonna argue with that it's been eight months still pretty positive uh i'm i'm looking at it now and the, the tweaks that we made for my original design were minor enough that like i i still overall i still like it more than regular mr mime i know a lot of people wanted me to add a beret and maybe that's something i would play around with now but i think ultimately mr mime looks a lot less mis like mr mime if they're not bald <laughs> it kind of just feels like an important part of the character so i went against that at the time Infinipede was responsible for the rest of the designs in today's episode. Here is their concept for Jinx. I'm pretty sure by now most Pokemon fans know the likely inspiration for Jinx is uh, Gyaru or Gangudo fashion, which is like, you know, tan skin, lighter makeup. As a white person, I'm not going to say whether or not that's racist. That's not my business. But I didn't want to go in that direction, at least not. You know, I wanted the purple Jinx skin. I, I did not want to go with the black Jinx skin. It's not, I don't think it's something modern Pokemon would do even without, you know, the connotations surrounding it. But I wanted to keep that original like Japanese street fashion inspiration. So I went with what's kind of like an offshoot of Gangudo called Manba. I don't believe it's particularly popular anymore, but it's 
similar, you know, it's got like the tan skin, but it uses colorful, bright colored makeup, hair and uh, clothing. So you'd see a lot of like bright blues, bright greens. Um, so I wanted to do the the blue to reference Jinx's ice type, which is another thing you don't really see referenced on her. So went with the blue dress, the blue lipstick. I kept the blonde hair. I like the blonde hair. And I wanted to give her a nice furry coat furry dress arms and the dress itself. I like the sort of Valkyrie opera reference with her breastplate, so I kept that. But I also wanted to make her a little more mysterious, befitting, you know, a psychic type. So she's got her eyes covered, which is also a thing with the uh, the yokai that Jinx might also have taken some inspiration from, the Yama Uba, the mountain hag, where a lot of them, they've got that really long, strangly, stringy hair. So the other thing about our Jinx is I really liked back in Gen 3 and for a while, you could not see Gardevoir's legs in basically anything. She was just a floating dress. Like I had read some fun fan fiction and theories that used that to a uh, good advantage in terms of like body horror and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. So I wanted to kind of take that and do that with our Jinx where like, does she have legs? Does she have a lower body? Or is she just like a dress? Is she some kind of spooky yokai woman kind of masquerading as a humanoid figure? This is one of my favorites I've done. I, I think I really took the design inspirations that I that I had and pulled them together. If I went back to it, I might have added like a highlight of blue in her hair to kind of reference the colored hair that Monba Fashion used. But I think she looks fine with just the blonde too. Scyther and Pinsir are not technically related, but they are counterparts. So we designed them as a pair for this project. Neither of them really look like insects. Even when you look at more modern bug type Pokemon, you can tell like these are bugs, these are insects, these are uh, arthropods in some way. I think Scyther and Pinsir don't meet that minimum threshold for like, this is a bug. Like if you don't know they're bugs. Scyther looks like a lizard and Pinsir looks like a potato. A potato with like some kind of industrial like drill coming out of it. I think it's cool like Scyther having the size and Pinsir having the uh, the mandibles on top of its head. Like those are fun. Well, I don't know if you'd call them mandibles on Pinsir. They're supposed to be like stag beetle horns. They're horns, mandibles, whatever. So with Scyther, I really wanted to play into Scyther being like a ninja because a lot of its Pokedex references have that comparison like, oh, it's as fast as sneaky as a ninja or something. So in addition to giving it the more insect-like eyes, the little mandibles, and the uh, abdomen coming out the back, I changed the color of its scythes to reference the Kama or Kusarigama that um, some, you know, samurai and ninja would have used, the double scythe, just to also make them look kind of more metallic. I wanted to maybe give Scyther that hint of like, this is a metallic thing on this Pokemon. I also wanted to give it wings that it could use almost like as a cape to play up that ninja feel. So on Pinsir, I gave it additional arms just because I feel the design is a little plain and as I said before, potato-y. I also wanted to match it with Scyther in a couple ways. So I gave it little wings. It's a beetle. It deserves some little wings. I think the other big complaint I had with Pinsir was the mouth parts. They do not look anything like you might see on a modern modern Pokemon, in my opinion. They even look a little more Digimon-esque. Like, if you look at Digimon like Wormmon, they have those side-closing mouth parts. But, like, if even Digimon's not doing mouth parts that, like, spooky and complex, then, like, Pokemon's probably not doing it either. Though I wanted to keep the idea that they're closing from the side, and I think that was something that you actually helped me figure out how we were going to do that. So he's got the mandibles coming from the head, as well as some from, like, the side and bottom of the body. So maybe if, if he's closing his mouth, you would see the, the crossing of the mandibles, but it wouldn't be as much of a horrifying monster monster as original pincer is. The other thing is obviously the, the horns. I wanted to make him look more like a stag beetle, so I, I kept the spikes. I wanted to keep the spikiness and the almost claw-like nature of them without taking away from him being a, a stag beetle. Especially, again, considering he gets kind of rivaled with Heracross later, and Heracross has like a normal rhino beetle horn. I think Pinsir got that additional pink on the insides of his head mandible claw things to add a little bit more color, because we were thinking he was just very brown. 
Definitely played around with the shape of the horn as I think as well as the shape of the middle pair of arms. But it looks good. It looks like you could like grapple someone with those. And Pincer, I think, does have a bit of a wrestling sub theme along with Heracross, as I said before, given the whole beetle wrestling thing that Japan has going on. So I think him being able to, you know, take those arms and grapple someone and then, you know, fl- you f- like flip them over, suplex them with the horns. That's that's a pretty cool image. The thing is, I don't love them, but I'm not sure what I would do different. I think they serve their purpose. I think they did what they need to do. Maybe I was in my head. Maybe I'm expecting too much out of them. They're not designs I love, but then again, neither is Scyther and neither is original Pinsir. I have a soft spot for Mega Pinsir, though. <laughs> and that's it for today. Well, actually, no. That's all the designs that we're covering in this recap. But if you're watching this during the premiere or just a little bit after, we are redesigning Mew and Mewtwo right now. This is the last live stream of this project, so we hope that you will join us and help us celebrate. You just have to click the link on screen after this video finishes or let autoplay take you there automatically. There's also a link in the description just in case anything goes wrong. If you're watching this a little bit later and you've missed the stream, that's all right. You can still watch it on demand, but you can also check out our finished art on our Tumblr at new151.tumblr.com. Mew and Mewtwo won't be polished and posted for a few days, but everything else is there. Thank you to my lovely patrons, especially Cherish patron Wispy White Smoke, and luxury patrons Ethan from Chicago, Freebird Nerd, and Seafood Dinner. Seafood Dinner actually edited this video as well. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope that we will see you on stream in a moment, but if not, I'll see you in the next chapter.